Last time on Everdark, Christian and Balthazar share a moment before being rudely interrupted. We now turn back to Damon and Julian, who have left the shower and intend to help themselves to what House Ravenscroft has to offer. Everdark, Episode 19, The Art of Evasion. The next section of the podcast has been abridged. Julian was in Balthazar's closet, choosing his outfit from the Iros's clothing, which displeased Damon. But Julian had explained that he had no choice. My own clothes are at my place, Julian had said. I want to go back there, but with the order and who knows who else is hunting us, I don't think that's a good plan. At least not for now. If they come to harm you, I will send them to their second and final deaths, Damon had replied without hesitation. Because, of course, that would be exactly what he would do, even faster than he had killed the other two in Nightvalen. But his simple statement had caused no end of consternation in his fledgling, who had frozen at his words, only then to spring into frantic action. He'd come towards Damon and gripped his biceps. His gaze was intense. It gave Damon a chance to look carefully at Julian's eyes. He was pleased to see they held a purple cast close to his red ones, different from the other vampire's silver orbs. It was yet one more thing to show that Julian was his fledgling, had his blood, and was not common. You can't just go around killing people, Julian informed him with all due seriousness. The world is different now. And anyways, killing is wrong. That's the first point. This Damon found most amusing, but he held his tongue. Killing was sometimes very right. But from his surface perusal of Julian's mind, this age, for his fledgling at least, was incredibly peaceful. Violence was something that was done for entertainment. It was not real. Julian was much more interested in understanding someone's point of view than gutting them. Second, these are your people, and they've been misled. So killing them is doubly wrong, and won't win you friends. Julian continued. This had some merit. It appeared that the vampires had been led astray. The immortals may have violated his laws while he slept, creating chaos and dysfunction in this world. He would be looking into this and fixing what was broken. It disturbed him that he could not sense the other immortals. Death was not a possibility, not in the way that Julian understood it. Was he so weak that he was cut off from them? Or were they so damaged that they could not reach back? Or there was the possibility that they were simply hiding? He did not know what disturbed him more. Third, Julian further continued, Clothes are not worthy of killing anyone over, even if it means that I have to wear Balthazar's clothes. Besides, he's fussy and territorial. I think wearing his stuff might annoy him. You like doing that. The last had been said with a grin. His activities with the cologne and the toilet had not gone unnoticed. Damon snorted. Wearing his things makes you smell like him. It displeases me. Well, you're going to have to be displeased. In fact, you might need to wear some of his things yourself. Though... Julian frowned as he measured Damon with his eyes. Though I don't know if they'd fit you. Maybe some of Arceus' stuff would be big enough. Though I guess what you have on now will do since we're just going to be hanging out inside the house. Damon looked down at his bare chest, black leather trousers and thigh-high leather boots. His wolf's fur coat was on the bed. What is wrong with what I'm wearing? It was Julian's turn to snort. <laughs> the fact that you have to ask tells me that you have no idea what the current styles are. Damon frowned. He picked up the wolf's fur coat and slipped it on. My style is eternal. Julian really laughed then which had him smiling too. Julian's laughter had the immediate effect of warming. Yeah, it is. It screams Vampire King, or member of a really interesting rock band. Julian chuckled. From what I saw your wardrobe in the Everdark, we'll definitely have to buy you some clothes so you'll fit in here. We cannot go back to Nightvalen for some time. Damon tried not to sound sad about that. Coming for Julian was nothing he would ever regret. Concerned lines appeared on Julian's forehead. Why? I mean, I'm guessing it would take too much energy for you to create a doorway again, like you did to get here. But what about the library? Can't we use the way Christian and I got in? 
Yes, but my body needs time to stabilize. One place or the other, not passing between both continuously, he explained. Julian thought about this for a moment, but then nodded, understanding it not completely, but enough. Okay, so we definitely don't go out looking for clothes or things we don't really need. Not until you're much stronger. Julian frowned then. Before you came, I, I was really weak. I felt like I couldn't even get up from the bed. But you haven't fed me and I feel okay now. Good even. Why is that? My presence alone has given you strength. But I must feed you soon, or you will start to regress again. Damon guessed. If Julian was like other fledglings, that would be the case. But Julian was singular. No one knew how he would react. And what if taking in more of my blood harms him? But Damon didn't allow himself to think about that too long or seriously. He would feed his fledgling. No one else would have that honor. Oh, okay, cool. We need to keep a low profile and not endanger House Ravenscroft in any case. So staying here and feeding is the plan. Julian answered. Did Balthazar truly convince a whole room full of vampires to freeze and then wipe their minds? He asked again. Julian had informed him of everything that had occurred since their connection had been severed. He'd thought that Julian had died when that happened, but clearly not. Thinking of Julian dying made him feel strangely fragile. Shudders ran through him, and his mind seemed to want to freeze at it. He pushed it away from himself. Julian was here. Julian was his. Those things would remain. He willed it. As to why their mental link had failed when Julian went into Siren territory, he believed now that it was because the other immortals had locked their worlds down, which partially kept him out, though Julian had still been able to pass into the Blood Den. He would have to grow stronger to reach out to them if they were still on this plane, or simply rip the locks off if they were not. Yeah, it was pretty epic, Julian said, and there was awe in his eyes. I suppose I should be grateful that his show of power made you think him worthy of drinking from, Damon finally answered. Julian grinned and shook his head. Well, it's not connecting two worlds or becoming an army of wolves, but I think it was impressive nonetheless. Damon's lips curled into a smile. Yes, but definitely not on the same level. No, but you've got to give him credit. Actually, I think you do. You're surprised that Balthazar could do that, Julian pointed out. Damon grimaced slightly. I can tell he is young. It is unusual. He interests me on a very superficial level. You shouldn't be mad at him. He didn't really believe in you. Maybe still doesn't. Not yet, anyways. But he helped Christian. And he would have helped me, too. Julian pointed out. Helped himself to you. You wish me to be impressed by the fact that he tried to steal you from me? It shows he has good taste, but little sense. Damon had crossed his arms over his chest defensively, and upon realizing this, he dropped them to his sides. I did not kill him. That is enough of a reward. You and the killing. Julian shook his head. I would have thought that living forever would have made you respect life more. You must love to live. I do, but I am a predator. Life is what I feed upon. Life is what I need to keep going. Other people's lives. You will understand that soon too, I think. Damon had told him. Julian didn't look convinced, but said, Maybe. I don't know that I want to feel that way. Or at least not be so cavalier about it. We shall see. All set to go, I think. Julian's voice stirred him from his reverie. He was disappointed to see that all that supple, silky skin was covered up again, and he'd missed seeing the last of it disappear as he'd ruminated on their earlier conversation. Julian seemed to favor loose, baggy clothing that hid his muscular form in drab colors. Not that Julian wasn't beautiful in even these strange, utilitarian outfits. He was. It was just that he should be seen in silk, fur, and leather to be truly arrayed properly. Currently, Julian was wearing some black cotton pants with a drawstring waist and a long-sleeved dune-colored shirt. He'd also grabbed a pair of shoes that were slip-ons in an almost matching color to the shirt. He was running his fingers through his still damp hair to arrange it, 
Damon stepped forward and knocked his hands away gently so that he could rearrange the strands. Making a mess of it, was I? Julian asked with a rather puckish smile. You take no pride in your beauty. That was a statement more than a question. I guess. It's never held me back. Julian shrugged. I suppose I should be grateful. You would have already had a suitor if you had presented yourself in a truly optimal light, Damon murmured. Julian's eyebrows rose up and a smile twitched his lips. I've had suitors. Tons of suitors. I'm just not dating anyone right now because I don't want to. But I could get someone, even without brushing my hair. Damon's eyes narrowed. I see. I bet you've had tons of suitors. Julian stood still while Damon carded his fingers through those soft, dark strands. Of course. Of course. Julian laughed again, delighted. Do you not think I am worthy of such? He imitated a front with a stiffening spine and raised eyebrow. Though Julian could not read his thoughts fully, the young man knew he was teasing. Oh, undoubtedly. Actually, I'm sure you have. He shifted uncomfortably. Which makes me want to ask, does the fledgling master relationship mean we're exclusive to one another? Damon sifted through Julian's mind to understand the context he was truly speaking of. Julian's thoughts were fascinating. They showed him two bodies intertwined, then the symbol of rings, then two lights becoming one. Images of his parents floated through his minds, memories of them laughing, of them holding one another, of how his father would simply rest his head against his mother's, and they would stay that way, silent, yet serene for long moments. Soulmates. What? Julian hadn't heard him fully. Those were the words, the idea that Julian had about exclusivity. Some have been exclusive, Damon answered carefully. Some have not. So it's not some automatic thing, which is good. I was just wondering. I feel... Julian licked his upper lip as he debated saying what he was feeling. Connected to you. It's what I imagined my parents felt. But he did not say that, or send that to Damon consciously. It's just an interesting feeling. Conflicting, too. Damon's right eyebrow rose. A flustered movement of Julian's left hand had Damon gently clasping it. You shouldn't do that, Julian said with a slight frown upon plush lips. Do what? Read more of my thoughts than I want you to. And with a faint smile, he added, And I know you know how much I want read. I do. Sometimes. Other times it seems you both do and do not want me to delve deeper. Damon drew his thumb along the hand he still held. Well, like I said, I'm glad that it's not automatic. We need to get to know one another, and kisses in the shower notwithstanding. Another flash of a smile. We're practically strangers to one another. And that matters. Julian sent him a sharp look. Doesn't it matter to you? Or are you just ready to jump feet first into whatever this is? What did he feel? Only one single line came to him and he sent it. You are mine. Damon then turned away from Julian and headed to the door of the bedroom. He knew that wasn't an answer, and that was likely going to cause the very independent Julian to squawk. But he couldn't answer more than that. His feelings were... complex. He had not sorted them out yet. The truth was that the thought of Julian being with anyone else made him see red. He'd never been possessive of his lovers before. It made little sense to do so when eternity and an infinite number of experiences beckoned. There were those who were always by one side, but variety and interests were to be pursued. But with Julian, things were different. He needed time to figure out that difference. You know, writing is hard and lonely. I'm more a storyteller who loves nothing better than interacting with the audience. This is why I write serially, and members have the ability to comment on the chapters as soon as I post them. So no waiting for an entire book to be done before I know what you guys think. In case you didn't know, I run my own serial website for gay action and adventure romance since 2010. And the reason I've done this as my focus, rather than writing traditional books, is because I get to talk to you guys. 
I have always loved interactive storytelling like Dungeons and Dragons, and this has been my way of interacting with my readers. Now, there are live streams. I've been reading Empire of Stars on stream at least once a month. And since Everdark started, I've been doing live streams with a cast member when they're available. On YouTube, I've made separate playlists for Empire of Stars chapters and Everdark cast streams, and I'll put the links to those in the notes. Julian's footsteps as he jogged up behind him, and the not unexpected question came quickly. What does that mean? I need to eat. A strangled laugh came from Julian. Okay. Evidently we are not talking about this subject. Or at least you aren't talking. But since I have a say in this, why don't I tell you what I think? What I want. At least for now. Damon steps as he strode down the hallway towards the scent of fresh blood slightly hitched. What if Julian said that he didn't want to be exclusive? What if he said he did not want more than the kiss they'd had in the shower? What if... Damon stopped abruptly in the middle of the hallway and spun around to face his fledgling, who nearly barreled into him, but his vampire reflexes caught him at the last moment from doing so. Um, are you okay? Julian asked, tilting his head to the side. You are having more of an effect on me than I realized. Damon slowly studied Julian's hair, the thick hair, the lush lashes that would have made him pretty except for the masculine beard. The strong jaw, the swan-like neck, the thud of that heart he already had memorized like it was his own. How so? Another frown. Julian was frowning much too much for his liking. Your quick, mortal thinking is trying to rush me into discussing something that neither of us is prepared to answer at this time. Damon paused and considered his fledgling further. The next section of the podcast has been abridged. Would you have me command you to be only mine? If I say this, as your master, as your king, it means something more than you realize. You think this is just a conversation between us, but it is not. And it was not a conversation that he'd ever really expected to have. The fledglings he'd tried to make before had died so terribly. He'd kept himself apart from them during the whole process. But with Julian? Julian had been inside of him from the beginning, despite his best efforts to stay away. Julian challenged his need to protect himself from the pain of separation with the equally powerful duty of honor. Those potential fledglings that had come to him before had always done so with awe and gratitude. He was the first among equals, the king. That was not how he and Julian had met. They had met as two people, two individuals. Julian saw him as powerful, but there was no worship there. Julian saw them as equals. So he was not at all surprised when Julian said, I don't believe in masters or kings, Damon. You're a person to me, an individual, not an institution. I do what I want. I do what's best for me. And you. Of course, you, too. He brushed his fingers down Julian's cheek. The fact that you say this tells me that you truly do not understand. I am more than just an immortal. I am the king, and you are my fledgling, my one, and perhaps only one, forever. Do you want other fledglings? Julian's eyes burned red for a moment. Jealousy was not just in Damon's breast, evidently. This shouldn't please him too much, but it did. His fledgling's emotions were quick, too, like a lit match. He is not yet sure of me. Can I blame him? But he said only, Handling one of you is a trial. I cannot imagine more. But Julian kept that hard, red stare on him, so he went on, You are the only one that has ever survived. I do not know why, but I think it is fate. I would not press fate for another gift such as you. But you want another fledgling? Julian pushed. He feathered his hands through the hair at the back of Julian's head. So soft. I want only you. The next section of the podcast has been edited. It's like a roller coaster being with you, Damon. I feel so out of control. Julian's mouth formed a pained smile. 
Sometimes that's good, you know? When you just let go and jump off that cliff, sometimes there's a pool of clear water below you, but other times there are jagged rocks. Not knowing it is part of the thrill that keeps me jumping. But this, it feels like you have my heart in your hands, even though... He shook his head and stepped back from Damon. The slight physical distance between them was agony. Damon reached for Julian, but the young man slid out of reach. He shook his head again. Damon, when you touch me, everything in my head short circuits. I want to be clear for this conversation. Julian explained. There can be no conversation. Why? Julian's head snapped up, staring at him again with the flaring red eyes. Does what I want not matter? It matters. It matters very much. But, like you, I am out of control. I am riding on this need to just... His hand that was still outstretched towards Julian curled into a fist. You are mine. I am yours. And this is dangerous. Julian's voice was but a whisper. Why dangerous? Because my instincts are urging me to take you away from everyone and everything. To destroy any who would come near you. You think killing is wrong. Killing is what I do. And you would see it. Rivers of blood. Damon shuddered and stopped. That had happened before. When he'd lost control. After a beloved potential fledgling had died and he had turned everything to a red mist. Julian's expression wasn't horrified. Not exactly. It was a mixture which was reflected in his next words. I don't know whether to feel treasured or scared as hell. Both. Damon dropped his hand to his side. You are brave and independent. I would not change that in you. Not the better part of me anyways. But the other part? The other part wants to keep you for myself and only myself. Julian crossed his arms over his chest. Funny. I feel the same way about you. Only I wouldn't be killing people to make that happen. Only kicking things. Punching walls, maybe. And the moment he said it, Damon found himself laughing out loud, which had a startling effect on both of them. Julian jerked back and then grinned. Damon had not heard himself laugh in a long time either. So you can make noise. I was beginning to wonder. Though why are you laughing? I can make noise if I wish. And I am laughing because you are so exactly like what I need. But nothing like what I thought you'd be, Damon admitted. You're just used to being in charge. And so am I. We're both alphas. Julian grinned at him wider. Alphas. I see. I suppose I would expect no less from my fledgling. He would have to be a leader. Damon leaned towards Julian. But I am in charge between us. He knew that Julian would perk up at the challenge. And he did. We'll have to see about that. They turned and began to companionably make their way up the stairs to the first floor, teasing one another about who would be in charge when Damon's hearing tuned in the voices of other vampires in the house. He put a hand out in front of Julian to stop his forward progress. Both of them listened. A woman was saying, Arceus, why didn't Balthazar consult us after this... this person entered our home? I understand that he is distracted by his new fledgling, but this is madness. This person is our king, Arceus was explaining patiently but his tone indicated that he had been saying this repeatedly. That's insane! A high, boyish voice cried out. Damon is a myth. I'm sorry, Arceus, but I think your faith is blinding you to what has to be a fraud. Worse than fraud? The woman got in. The Order clearly has some beef with this person. We don't need that kind of attention. Our house has just now started to establish itself. All of that could be lost by taking in this... this con man! Why are you so certain this is false? Arceus's tone was even. The tone of a person used to being doubted, but knowing he knew the truth nonetheless. You have not even met him. Nothing he says or does will convince us that he's really King Damon. The boy answered for her. Damon's eyes narrowed. Nothing would convince them, would it? Nothing at all? He would make them eat those words. 
Julian's hand was suddenly gripping his shoulder. He turned to his fledgling. Julian's expression was firm as he said, No killing, Damon. Remember that they are our allies. Do not worry, my fledgling. Damon smiled mirthlessly. I would not be able to enjoy them admitting how very wrong they were to doubt me if I killed them. He swept up the stairs to meet the vampires who doubted his existence. Join us next time for episode 20. Do you want to join the next live stream? The easiest way is to subscribe to the Wraith Rain YouTube channel. You'll see the community posts, shorts, announcement videos, and get notifications when we go live. You can also join my good old fashioned mailing list and you'll get an email reminder within 24 hours with links to our YouTube, Twitch, and Facebook channels. Hope to see you on the next one. The Everdark Podcast by X Aratare is performed by Edward Fox, Adam Riley, Jay Thelis, Bruno Devant, Kelly Michaels, and Hannah Hart, with Liz Gentle as Seer. Edited by Matthew Prince, continuity by Adriel Wiggins. Everdark is produced by Wraith Rain Publishing in association with Her Grace Reed Studios. Copyright 2022 by Wraith Rain Publishing.